Paintball Nerd. Today's guest on Paintball Nerds Fun 5 started playing paintball in 1986. In 1988, he went pro with the California Black Diamonds. And in 1992, he joined the Ironmen. He played with him until he retired in 1997, until the team started back up again in 2019, known as the OG Ironmen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Jamie Canavero. Up, hey, so Isaac, how are you? Good to see you. Not much. How are you? Good to see you too. Good, man. You know, I, I remember the first time I heard the name J Man, uh, I was watching Sunday Drivers, and Chris Lasoy was talking about the Iron Men of old. And they mm -hmm. and they started it all, right? And he's saying names that I hadn't heard before, uh, like Clayton and J Man. And that was the first <laughs> time I heard it. And then I got on the Ironman and Billy Wing told me stories about J-Man and Shaner told me stories about J-Man. Uh, so you're They're like the lies. legend's legend. <laughs> <laughs> they are all lies. <laughs> well, what, what was it like to, I mean, play for basically the founding fathers of competitive paintball, the Ironman of old? It was crazy. I mean, it was just a blast. I mean, there are so many good players on that team. Uh, the team was had players, attacking players, mid players, defending players that all meshed together um, very well. Uh, the team had a lot of confidence when they played. If six guys got shot, we didn't worry. Mm. We had confidence that we're still going to win the game, you know. Um, and Bobby ran it. Bobby when Bobby would say something, when you're going to get to that bunker, even though you know that's going to be a long run to that bunker, he's already putting in your mind, you're going to make it to that bunker. Not yes. if you're going to get to it. When you get to that bunker, I want you to look left or look right. Yeah. It right. was just always positive. It's going to happen. Yeah. So. so it sounds like Bobby would always orchestrate the game plans before, you know, the entire game before it happened. And then you guys went out there and executed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was that was all due to the part that we spent so many hours walking the fields. Mm. I mean, start of the day, walking the fields, even when the tournament was running, you play your game. You don't go back to the camp and relax. You're watching the other games that are played at that field or a, a field that you're going to play next. Mm. So it, it was, you were on your feet the whole day, you know, just observing all different things of, of the field and what other teams are trying to do. You know, when I hear stories about the Ironmen of old, you know, sometimes it's it's like off the field shenanigans and, and goofing around <laughs> and stuff like that. But you guys took it very seriously as well. Oh, we did. We did. Yeah, we, we had a lot of there were a lot of practical jokes, but we I mean, there was practice every week. Um, it took me two and a half hours to get to practice. And Shaner and Brian, it took them probably three and a half hours. There was seven hours wow. of driving just to get to practice. And that was every week, if not Saturday and Sunday. So it, wow. it was, uh, you know, you had to be dedicated. Yeah. You know. Well, so what was it like to just dominate all those years? It was fun, you know, <laughs> but it, it was a lot of work. It was, I mean, it's, um, you have to put your dues in. It just yeah. doesn't come easy. You know, you yeah. can't buy success at, at Costco. Yeah. You know? Amen to that. Well, tell us about one of your favorite memories in paintball for you. One of the, well, one was that tournament in the Boconos where we went. We had no clue what we were doing. Tournament scenes. We played a couple local ones around here. Get back there. You're playing like the Lords of Discipline and PMI teams and in fields that are so thick you can't even see across. The, we don't. We have bush or woods ball fields here, but in those fields, um, it, it was really thick. So we learned a lot. But I think we ended up taking third, and you know, just had a good time with that. That was opening my eyes to the tournament scene. Mm. But I, I think and that was with the Black Diamonds. That was with the Black Diamonds. Yeah. But I think probably one of my biggest things that I, I liked was winning the Mayhem Masters. Yeah, we. And where we is went, that at? That was in England. Nice. So we went there the year before. I mean, it, it was a, a good tournament. 
you know, played the UK Predators and all that. And the year before we got there, uh, it got to the finals and it was a coin top. One one side of the field was junk. One was good. We lost the coin mm. toss. Next year went there and you, you had to battle. I mean, there's a lot of good teams, um, but we won. I mean, there's, you know, tons of people watching and we, it was just fun. We, we we had a bad taste in our mouth for losing the year before. So the whole team really, I think, basically worked hard to do it again and, and mm. win it. And we did. And so. this was versus the Predators, right? I think Dirk told me about this. Yeah, there was a Predators. There, there was a whole bunch of teams that were there from, you know, all over Europe and stuff. So. But it, it, it was a you know, it was a fun tournament. Yeah. So the previous year you played them and lost to them in the finals and got second. Correct. And, and then you came back and got them. Correct. Redemption. Correct. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it, it, it's 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 hard because a lot of teams know that the Ironmen are a very aggressive team and we're going to try to just come and slap you in the face and run you over. The Predators are a very good defensive team. And they would just mm. dig in and you'd have to, they knew we were coming. So they know how to set up a defense. And so we had to figure out how to get through that. Yeah. So, And their fields were kind of like, um, uh, kind of like New York. There's bunkers, but there's long spaces in between. So if you're going to make that run, you got to make it at the right time and have some quick right. guys to get there. So how about, uh, how about off the field shenanigans? Anything that you're allowed to share? Yeah, there's a few. We, um, well, we also, a lot of the team, a lot of times we played just wiffle ball in the hotel parking lot and use the rental van as the backstop, you know, just fun <laughs> stuff like that. Um, I think one year, I forget, I don't know if it was in New York, we went and we went to a bait shop and we bought just hundreds of crickets. And it was easier to go to hotels and get keys for, you know, other, every player's name. So you can say, I'm so and so. <laughs> and they, I liked my key in. So we threw a bunch of crickets, and I think it was in Bad Company's hotel room. <laughs> and I think it was Tom, he said something like the fact, yeah, you guys, you know, everything's fine and dandy until you turn the lights out. And then everything goes chirp, chirp, chirp all, <laughs> all night long, you know. That's uh, awesome. And we, we had Man. that. We, we did, I think it was the Bushwhackers. They rented a big, like, moving van to stage out of because it was raining. And they locked the back but you can lift the back door up about six inches. Well, we bought a whole bunch of like stink bombs and lit them and put them in glass <laughs> jars and we closed the, the lid. And all of a sudden, a couple seconds later, you can't even see the steering wheel from the front. And uh, I think our buddy Scotty had his stuff in there. He goes, our, our gear bag stunk for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So we, we have well, fun. You, and you played with some amazing people. I mean, uh, you played with Shaner and Brian and Dirk, mm -hmm. uh, Clayton, Kyle, and you've played right. with uh, Daryl, Trent, right. Bobby. Mm -hmm. who, am I, who am I leaving out? Uh, played with Xander. I don't know if you know Xander, Alexander mm. Rose. Uh -uh. First year I was there, he played. Um, little unknown fact about him was he actually, you know that show BattleBots? Yeah. So before a couple of years back, he he built the the championship battle bot called Bronco. No kidding. And if you watch some videos, you'll see that it has a tank on the side that says Ninja, like the yeah. Ninja air tanks and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was a good player. Uh, it was lucky to play with all those guys. You know. Did you? I mean, at, at the time when you were going through it, did you guys know that it was going to be the the staple in paintball that it is today? That people are going to refer back to it for years and years. No, no. We were just kind of stuck in that time right there. Let's, you know, let's win this game. Let's win this tournament. We didn't, yeah. you know, I mean, I didn't think down, you know, to think that far in the future. I mean, it's funny you go to fields now and you hear everybody yelling G1, G2, this and that, you know, but yeah, we didn't, we didn't think that. We we're just kind of focusing on what we needed to do that day or that week or, you know, the, or for the year's tournament series, the world championships or whatever, you know, getting well, points and being, and being consistent. I mean, how do you feel about it now? Surely you must know that that you're a legend in paintball and you played for a legendary team full of legends and you made a big impact on paintball. Like, how do you how do you feel about that? I don't think I'm a legend. <laughs> but I know no? the team was good. No, no. I know the team was good. But, you know, you have to have good. 
you have to have Jamin. a Ty? legends think that you're a legend. Oh, yeah. so when you got a guy like Chris Lasoya and Billy Wing and Shane are saying that you're a legend, yeah, you're a legend, yeah. right? We, we, we had a good team that played well together, you know. It's, I mean, I, I was lucky to play like you were talking about all these great players. Mm. I was lucky to play with Shaner and Brian Benini when they were kids. I, I don't even think Shaner could drive himself to the field when he started <laughs> playing with us in Santa Cruz. And that was, I played, it was, even when we were with the, with the Ironman, it was, we had like three squads, three squads of three and somebody in the back. It was mm. Shaner, myself, and uh, Brian that always ran together. Same with, with the Black uh... Diamonds. Didn't uh, you guys convince some girl that Shaner was Doogie Hauser? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. <laughs> it was, that was back in the Poconos. We we used to always call him Doogie, and then we were back in the Poconos. And we, hey, Doogie, what's that? I said it's Doogie. You know, well, I said, well, it's Neil Patrick Harris. That's Doogie Hauser's real name. Yeah. Well, how does he? How does how come out? I said, oh, they just film a whole bunch of episodes at one time. Then he's on vacation. So she, I think she came up to him. And she had him sign a picture of her boyfriend on the back. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. So yeah, we used to always call him Doogie. Oh, he does. Yeah. He does look like Neil Patrick Harris back. I mean, when he back was back in the day. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah, so he's. Well, yeah, you know, it, it, I was lucky to play when us three were a wrecking crew, along with the, the other two squads that were on the team. And that's what made the team so good. Every the little squads played to get well together, but we also practiced outside of your squad in case, like I lost or I got shot out and Shaner got shot out. Who can come over there and play with Brian? You mm. know, so it's it's not a lock squad, but you would right. sit there. So you would practice. Bob would have us practice. You know, I hardly played with like Clayton or Marty, but all of a sudden, mm. okay, you guys are squad. You guys practice over there together. Interesting. So you like built a really strong connection with two other dudes on the right. field and then like also practiced for anomalies in the, in that scenario. Exactly. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And, well, and we, and back, a... back, back in the day, I mean, I know guys now I see guys are, you know, snap shooting, shooting left, left-handed, right-handed back then we didn't really. And then we started practicing shooting left-handed if you're mm. right-handed and Bobby right. would have us, have to do six on three. The three, you're practicing your non-dominant hand. Mm. You know, just, you know, put you in a position where you're not comfortable. Yeah, put you outside of your comfort zone so you can grow. Exactly. Exactly. You got a story about Brian? Mm, I don't know if I can say it. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, Typical a Brian guy. story. <laughs> Brian's a good guy. Brian. I, I, I know... I, I just can tell you that back in the day, Brian and Shaner's rooms were always a disaster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So, and, and, and I roomed with Daryl, who's very neat and organized. And yeah. just to piss him off, you know, we'd get back in the field. You're all muddy. He'd take his cleats off outside. You take your cleats off. And I'd, I'd just walk right in with my cleats on just to piss him off. <laughs> <laughs> who, was, uh, who was your favorite teammate over the years? Teammate, I mean, well, I roomed with Daryl, so I was really close with him. Mm -hmm. um, but I spent a lot more. Back in the day, we all hated, when we were on the Diamonds, we hated the Ironman. And really? One, yeah, because we always practiced and clashed, you know. So who was on the Diamonds with you? Um, that went to that, well, the ones that went to the Ironman was myself, Shane Pastana, Brian Benini, and Scotty Clayton. Mm. Um, and then there's other guys that were Chuck Hench. He was like the captain or a guy named Mike, Mike Raggio, Sal Cala. Um, there, there are a few other ones, um, Brett and Dan Graydon, they were brothers. So, so you guys were just rivals with the Ironman. That's what it was. It was rivals. Yeah. So, and I think at one tournament, I, I remember Daryl got shot kind of in the temple and they kind of lean him against the tree. He almost had a concussion. We're all, that's when he had like an earring. I, I hope they shot that earring out of his head, you know, <laughs> and then later on find out, you know, he's a good guy and I room with him yeah. and we, we got along really good, but um, I spent more time. With, well, I had a lot more playing time with Shannon and Brian because we both came from the diamonds on up. So how'd you guys end up on the men? Um, I think Bob was calling Shaner mm. and trying to get him over. And he actually got Shaner 
and Brian Benini and I think Brian's cousin to go over there. And I'm not sure if Bobby asked who else do we want? And I think I'm not sure if Shaner said we want J Man and Scotty. Mm. And then Bobby called me and said, You want to come on out? And went out, did some practices and all that stuff, and you know, just slowly merged onto that team. And after that, you know, the diamonds basically disbanded. Got it. You think Bob Long is the greatest captain of all time? I think so. I mean, I've, I've basically played for two captains because I've only been on two teams. But I think he he has a vision. And also, he's very smart, along with Phyllis, about numbers, about, you know, they Phyllis was always at the scoreboard looking at mm. the numbers. What if this team does that? What if this team does this? Okay, well, sometimes you wouldn't want to be in the number one position because you're going to play mm. this team, this team, and this team which are going to be harder teams. You want to be in number two or number three position and you'll play these teams. So we're always trying to shuffle to basically try to make our bracket the easiest so you can go the farthest. And so Phyllis was, is Bob's wife, right? That's correct. Yeah. So she's a lot more involved than like providing snacks and water for the team. She was involved at the, at the team level oh, yeah. with helping with scores and everything. Oh, she, she had stats of everything. Wow. You know, this guy got, you you've been getting shot out the first you know the first three minutes of the game this amount of time so she had stats of so she was know, a coach she was a, a yeah she was she wasn't really coaching us she was in bob's ear telling him the stats yeah. that we were doing um she wow. was she was giving us you know make sure you guys drink here's some gatorade here's this here's that you know, she, she did was it all. The, the team mom you know yeah so, um, amazing yeah well, what what about player to watch do you, do you have a favorite player um, it could be from all time. So it doesn't have to be from the, you know, 92 Ooh. to 97 period. It could be like your favorite player to watch of all time. There, there's a lot of them. Like I said, we used to sit off to the side when we weren't playing and watching games. Um, I liked watching a lot of the aftershock guys, you know, Spud, Rennick, Saransky, you know, Gary Noblet, um, mm. kind of watch them, um, Danny Love, even Vu Hong, you know, Vu Hong was from Northern California. He he played here, we kind of grew up playing with him. Um, I hear Vu's name a lot. Yeah, yeah. He, he's a little quiet guy, but you got to watch out for him on the field. Yeah. yeah. Um, Todd Adamson, you know, you know, he's he's always around. You know, so, yeah, still to this day, and a lot of players are, are his favorite. Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm, you know, it's good to see you still going. So, yeah, but yeah. I mean, for, I, I, I have to be, let's see, I'm biased because I think Shane's a really good player, you know, an awesome player along with Marty, but I saw a lot of the damage that Shaner did from having Brian open things up and then Shaner running through the woods and just, I mean, I've seen games where Shaner shot seven, eight guys. Yeah. You know, and but I got to see that because I was usually behind Shaner and he would do stuff and we just kind of leapfrog together. Yeah. But then you have Morty who's out there playing with a pump when everybody's got semis and he's standing. Why did he do that? It's Morty. (laughs) It worked for him. It worked for him. I mean, he, he was shooting people, you know? So, um, you got to give that. Marty was great, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. And he, Marty was great at getting in the other people's heads also. Mm. You know, you're playing him, you're listening to him jabber jaw all day long, all game long. He doesn't know that, but some of the players are crawling up on that player. You know, he's just keeping them out of their game. He, when I was on the Ironman, he came, uh, the, the LA Ironman, he came um, and helped us out when we were re- rebuilding the team. And it was a bunch of young guys and he was sitting there and watching us do drills and stuff like that. And he goes, none of you kids aim. No one knows how to aim. And he he had a red dot sight like on his angel. And he's like, mm-hmm. you know, aim. Like take some time. And he's like, and he made comments because people are just shooting. They're, they're blowing apart their bunker before they pop out. Blah, 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 blah. And then like the bunker's exploding. It's like right. everyone can see you coming out because they see this blast of, you know, paint coming from your side of the bunker. They know where exactly where you're going to pop out. Right. And he was like adamant that like this practice, we're all going to take – you know, we're all going to take the time to learn how to aim. 
Right. Um, and it really like it stuck with me because, you know, a lot, a lot of times we kind of just with paintball guns, you know, just kind of lead like, oh, that's right, spot. right. Let me let me adjust. Right. right. Like, Marty had all the young guys sitting there and like, look, see the paintball hitting the target and pull the trigger. Right. And, uh, you know, that's the I was I was thankful to get that that wisdom from him, you know. Right. Yeah. I know him and Shana, they always had the red dots on. I, I didn't use one. Um, yeah. But, I mean, if you play so much, you you know you pick up your gun and you know where it's going to go. Right. Pretty much, you know. Yeah, you um, can aim without a red dot. Exactly. Sure. Yeah, but they yeah. were, sometimes they would just sit there and they would wait for that shot. And they wanted to make sure it, it, that red dot was on it, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> But, yeah. yeah. Mar- Marty was a, a great player. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was like the first person that I saw in uh, in Game On, which is a movie by JT. And they're saying how great Marty was. And he's saying, I've won everything there is to win. I won the <laughs> one-on-one here and this and that. I'm like, wow, he must be an amazing player, you know? Right, right. So, J-Man, or, or, I mean, over the years, you've I'm sure you've collected some amazing things uh, in your in your gear bag. Do you have a, an item that you hold near and dear to your heart? I've got a few. Um, one was my girlfriend at the time, which is my wife. Now she made me a barrel bag, um, nice. to put all my barrels in. Um, you, like you got see. it. I got it. That's all it is. It's something simple, but she, she made that, which was kind of telling awesome. me that, that she was kind of supporting me playing this game. You know, yeah, um, that's important, which, which it is important. You know, you, you ask for things to be thankful for. It's like I had my girlfriend, my, my wife that let me do this because you know that going yeah. away for practice or going away for tournaments, that could be hard on a relationship. Of course. You know, I mean, it's, I mean, I had a girlfriend before that, before my wife, she said, I'm done with this, you know, mm. said, well, you knew what you were getting into. <laughs> but yeah my my wife uh she made that uh when was that one. made was that when was that when did she make that for you that was probably 1990 oh wow Nin- so companies have made those since then way right. way after I, I i don't think then another one was made until probably around 2000 and uh-huh. it was made by reds and it's neoprene uh-huh. and it's the same concept you fold over the flap and roll it up Right, right. Um, so yeah. she invented that. That's pretty cool. Oh, I don't know if she invented it. She just sewed up. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of barrels do you have in there? Oh, jeez. Anything, anything vintage? There's an old die. Stainless steel all the way through, huh? Stainless. Wow. Do you want me to show you a secret one? Yes. I don't know if I should. <laughs> So back That's in the it. day, we were sponsored by Bud Ore. It's like a Bud Ore barrel. Whoa, look at that porting. Okay. But Smart Parts had their barrels out. Smart Parts had a barrel something like this. Yeah. Whoa, it's two pieces. That Bud didn't want to shoot in the sp- uh, smart parts. So Ricks and Dayhouse on the team had a smart parts and took a Bud Orr, honed it out, and it goes over the top. So you guys wanted to shoot smart parts barrels, but you didn't want anyone to know that. Bud wouldn't allow us to do it. Were you sponsored it- by smart parts? Yes. No, no, we're sponsored by Bud. Okay. So you wanted to use the smart parts barrels and they weren't, you weren't, you know, they weren't sponsoring you or anything. You just wanted to use them. Right. So Rick made, he took a Bob Long barrel, right? Or a butter, butter or barrel. Butter barrel. Mm-hmm. Butter or barrel, honed it out so it could slide over a smart parts barrel. Correct. Ooh, and I this don't know. One... I don't know. If, I don't know. That might be frowned upon. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day. Yes. Bud didn't want it, you know, but you yeah. can edit that. But this one was actually Shanner's. <laughs> this was actually Shanner's. How'd you get it? Took it. <laughs> Smart. Just took it from me. <laughs> Dude, that's uh, awesome. Yeah. What else you got there, there? There's other ones. There's, you know, some Bob Long ones, you know, the long shot and all that. Yeah. 
So, but yeah, just a, some J and J's. We were sponsored by J and J. I don't know if I have any of those here. Yeah, so I got yeah got a few of those. There's some J and J's awesome. I know. J and J used to send us like boxes of, of um, uh, barrels. Try them out, whichever ones you like. Keep. What were the best barrels? I I guess smart parts. Um. Back then, I mean, dye was coming out was there. The dyes were were heavy. You know the the stainless ones. Um, I'm I had trying to make them as light as possible. Yeah. Um, we had some, you, I had some J and J's that shot very good, but you had to find the right one, you know, mm. you know, so. Didn't they make a ceramic barrel at one point? Uh, um, J and J? Yeah. I don't think when I was playing, it was pretty much brass. Brass. Wow. Yeah. That's an interesting choice. Heavy barrels. I wonder why we've gone away from that. I don't know. I mean, well, look at all the guns. The guns are lighter now too, you know. That's true. You know, but there's science behind a heavy barrel. Like it's supposed to stabilize more and straight right. shot. Right. You could hone stainless steel better than anything else. Right. Yeah. So. So. But yeah. What so, else you got? Uh. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude! Let's just look at this thing for a second. So J man is... on the side, right hand feed. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's see the pneumatics. Oh, have you had that redone recently? That's nice. Okay. Um, I think Dirk went through it when I started playing again a couple years ago. So that thing works. It works. Yeah. It looks like it's in mint condition. Like no scratches. You probably don't, don't play with it much, huh? Oh, I played with this for the uh, last couple of years when we were playing with Ironman. Uh, oh, so, but, you, so you have played with it recently? Yeah. Oh, yeah. After well, when I got back into it, then Dirk went through it, and then I took it out when we were up in Sacramento, played for a, a bit. But this is this is the tournament gun back in ninety, probably ninety six, ninety seven. So I saw Billy Wing with he has. I've seen Billy Wing's uh, blue one. I've seen Eric Roberts. Uh -huh. Who else has those blue autocockers? Well, I think our whole team had them. The whole Ironman. Oh, okay. What I played with, we we had the nickel plated ones first, and then a little bit after that, Bud gave us those. Okay. How many of those were, is just one per, per player got one? Yeah. 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 Okay. So there's not, there's not very many of those blue ones or no. the nickel ones. No, no, no. And do even you have the nickel one. I do not. I actually, <laughs> it, it was beat up and I gave it to a kid. He was a, uh, he was a, um, a ref at a field and he, he always wanted this and that. And I was like, I got this one. And, um, I, I think I sold him an older autococker and he goes, well, what about that one? And I'm looking at it. It was it, the body needed to be heel coiled and this and that. And so, yeah, go ahead take it. Wow. And uh, so, but uh, I Dirk know a lot of he wouldn't, he wouldn't take 10 grand for his. I have no idea. <laughs> he, he still actually what he says, he, what's that? That's what Dirk says. He said that, he, that oh, yeah. he, if someone offered him 10 grand, he wouldn't take it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, at that time, you know, okay, because the nickel ones were older, they weren't as good shooting as the blue ones, you know, because yeah. time progressed and people learned how to work on them. Bobby, you know, he was selling his. We actually got, Bobby actually gave us one to shoot after the blue ones. Uh, but I think the story was that Bud wouldn't allow us to shoot it because it was a Bob Long signature series, hmm. not, not factory. Not a factory. That's what I think yeah. because you know I've got one, and it's never played a tournament, but still in the bag. Mm. Yeah. Would you Would you ever sell the old blue one? I don't think so. Not now. Yeah. 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 It's too special, yeah. man. It's too rare. Yeah. yeah. It's part of history. Yeah. It's part of paintball history, right there. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a it, it, it's a good shooter too. You know, it shoots good. Yeah. Right on. Well, Jay, man, what, what advice would you give to a younger player who's looking to make their way up through the ranks in paintball? Uh, Got to be willing to put in the time. Don't, don't think you're going to get it right away. You, you got to put in the time. Um, you got to take criticism. Mm -hmm. You know, 
you know, if somebody says you're doing this wrong, don't say you know what everything. You kind of think about it and take the criticism and see how you can improve yourself. Um, you gotta, you gotta be consistent. You know, it's it, it's kind of tough, but you know, uh, you just can't come out there one day and be a superstar and then the next three weeks suck at it. You know, that's yeah. where that's where the hard work comes in. That you're good consistently. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I know that's what you're known for is being super consistent, solid as a rock. That's how Dirk put it is like J man yeah. solid as a rock. So that's a, yeah, that's definitely an important one as well. What yeah, else? That's, what other advice? Um, have fun. I mean, you can't take yeah. it so serious. You gotta have fun at it. I mean, if, if, if you're taking it so serious, then, you know, it's just going to wear on you. Go out there, have mm. fun. Don't worry about getting shot and let the team down, you know? Yeah. You know, just, Go play, have fun. J-Man, what's it like to, to now that your son is like old enough to play with you? I mean, what is it like stepping on the field with, with your son? Oh, it's great. It's great. I can't wait, man. My son's yeah. two. I got, got quite a few years, but. Right, yeah. How old was Garrett when he started playing with you? Well, he's 27 now, so he's probably 22 or 23. Oh, okay. So he's, yeah. he's pretty new. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's the first time that he's played is when I went back when Daryl said he's got um, Mike's son, Mike Baird and his son, Dirk Gadbury and his son, and Daryl and his son and myself playing. So yeah. we went out. So we went out and played. And um, and that was what 2019 ish. Yeah, whenever that OG Ironman started. Something got like it. That. Yep. So so we got out there and I kind of you know started playing. You know, kind of telling them this is what's going on. This is what you do and. Uh, even one point we played a, we were playing like a woods ball field and he started getting into it and then he got shot and the game was going on. It was just a fun game. And at the end I was at a back bunker and um, I was sitting there and it was like, there was like two of us left and there was like five guys coming at me and he was behind us watching behind the tape with Daryl. And I sat there when I sat there, when I played and I knew crap was going down, you just sit there and you got to, Take a deep breath and relax and think, don't get all freaked out. You know, okay, how can I sit there and defend against all these guys and try to slow mm. the game down in your mind? And it's been so long since I did that. So I, I, and in that game, I said, slow down and just think, and you know, what's the best way to, to deal with this? And I did that and I shot, I don't know, maybe four of them. And the, me and the other guy, the, the last guy got me or something like that. And then I, when I was walking back with my son, he said, yeah, he goes, Daryl was sitting there, he was showing there, he's talking to me about, you know, you and how you did this. And that's why we had J-Man on the Ironman. He was very just <laughs> calm. He goes, I, I didn't know you were that good, Dad. I said, I don't think it was that good, you know. <laughs> but You didn't uh, tell him? You didn't tell him about your illustrious career? Well, he, I mean, he, he, knew I, he knew I played and, you know, he knew, I mean, all this, uh, all this stuff was packed up and in the garage, you know, trophies and all that stuff. He knew I played, but... Um, yeah. But then but he never started, took an interest until until you invited him out. No, not really, not really. You know, and so then we started going out and playing. And then he he started he, you know, I mean it was it was great because he had like I said, Michael Beard's kid, uh, Brandon, awesome little mm -hmm. player, and my son Garrett, yeah. and Dylan, great players, and you know three yeah. kids. I mean, great players, fast, athletic, you know, and it's good because. Us old man can't run down the woods like they can. <laughs> so, so we we used our smarts and their legs. Well, you're I mean you're living the dream, man. Like I said, I, I can't wait till my son's old enough to play. It's like, and I hope he likes it. You know, I hope right. that I can get him into it because I love it so much. It's right. been a huge mm -hmm. part of my life. Right. And uh, but you know you see guys like that their kids have been playing since the beginning, like Steve Rabikoff and his son Justin Rabikoff is right. You know, top level pro now. And it's like wow, that's. What a cool thing, you know. It is. It to, is for your kid to be interested in what what you're doing. Exactly. I mean, for um, for them to cherish the sport that I loved and him, yeah. like and love it also. It's it it is it's, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. You you you'll be well, there soon. You'll be there soon. Yeah, I can't. I can't wait. You know. Man. You know. But uh, yeah, it, so it, it's. What, what would you say that you're most thankful for that paintball's given you? There's a lot of things. Um, one, all the people 
all the players and the people in the industry that I met. Um, a lot of them are still friends, you know, still get in touch with each other. Um, was very happy to be able to travel. Yeah. I mean, I, I got out of it before a lot of the international travel. I mean, we went to England a little bit after that, the sport, everybody was going all different other places, but um, I wouldn't have been able to do that at that time anyway, but um, the traveling was, was great. I wish I would have stayed when, let's say you go to Texas, we go fly in and, and then you leave the tournament Sunday night or whatever. I wish I would have stayed an extra day or two days to see more of the, too. you know, um, but it was just, you know, it was still, you had to come back and work, you know, and exactly. Life, I, life is happening too. Right. Yeah. yeah I'm self-employed. So if I don't work, there's no money. So it's like, get back yeah. and get to work. Um, yeah. but, um, yeah, you know, it's um, all the friends, the traveling, um, you know, thankful for all the sponsors that helped out because it, it does get expensive, you know? And yeah, of course. Hopefully, you know, us winning help the sponsors sell more product also because you have mm -hmm. to help them out also. You just can't take. Yeah. You know, you can't take and take and take. You have to give. Yeah, absolutely. So. Awesome, J-Man. Well, I appreciate your time here. Is there anything that you want to part with for the paintball community? Uh, you know, support your local fields, your local stores. Um, I know like when we were going to one of the fields we played at a lot, you see kids out there at a birthday party on the speedball field and, you know, we're doing our things. And but we've at times went on the field and took the rental gun out away from the kid and gave them our guns, which are, you know, yeah. super guns and let them play with that stuff, let, you know, just try to get the kids into the sport to grow yeah. the sport, you know? And, you know, do you see some kid that doesn't really know what he's doing? Go out there and doesn't take a lot of time. You know, what are you going to do? Go back and talk four stories at the cars or you can go help the little kid. Hey, come up over here or go over there. You know, just try to help the, the little sport. ones out that, that, that don't know, or, or, or you can try to make it even a better sport for them. You know? Absolutely. So, but awesome. Yeah. Thanks, J-Man. No problem and, and support Paintball Nerd.